Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about burnout. So let's get into it. So um, I haven't been back here for a while. I'm sorry. I haven't been back here in like, I want to say like four or five weeks and I do feel a little bit guilty about that. Um, not that I actually like kept myself to any particular schedule regarding my YouTube channel, but I think the fact that my semester has been so video heavy in terms of submissions has sort of taken a toll on how much I can actually produce for my channel and how much I actually enjoy making videos. So I started this channel for fun last semester because I really like just documenting my daily life and documenting random things I got up to, which I do have a video sort of like running in the background about my semester, it's in the works, I don't really have anything concrete for it yet, it's just mostly a compilation of moments in my semester that made me happy or were just funny in like hindsight. So um, that will be coming soon to a theatre you- no I'm joking, that, that will be coming soon uh, once my semester is over. It has been a very tiring and frankly um, mentally draining semester as uh, semester twos always my semester two last year was terrifying in terms of what it did to my mental health and I can say that this is a close second if not third compared to my first semester in uni so I would say that I am coping a lot better than I would have been in the past but I wouldn't say that I'm at my peak in terms of how happy I am with what I'm doing and how I am managing my mental health. So let's talk burnout. Um, this, funnily enough, came about in a conversation I had with a junior of mine. Uh, shout out to Eric for the video idea because he literally suggested why not you make a video on burnout. And I was thinking to myself, if I weren't so burnt out, I would. And uh, that's not to say that I'm not burnt out right now, I actually am, but I found a pocket of time where I was feeling a little more at ease with myself to be able to sit down in front of a camera and record and talk about my burnout in a, I guess, healthy way without it becoming too draining and without it weighing too much on my mind. Because I think my burnout has manifested itself in ways that I'm not proud of. And it also affected a lot of how I've been going about my daily life, which means that our regular routines like making my coffee have been disrupted entirely. I make my V60 coffee almost every morning and it's dwindled down to maybe like once a week, which is kind of painful for me to see because I've been sitting in my cupboard and I haven't used them and I feel really, really bad because they're not that cheap. But at the same time, it's almost like I stare at my setup every day and I feel a bit guilty about it because like, Coffee is one of the safe spaces that I've always had in terms of when things sh things go to shit, shit hits the fan. It's a constant thing there for me to rely on and I haven't been able to rely on that because I just haven't had the energy or the mental space to actually even go about it as much as it is a routine in my life. Um, another thing I've neglected is actually watering my plants is not unheard of. I have a whole Instagram about the fact that I don't f I don't freaking f remember to water my plants. But um, Crowley looked a little wor like worse for wear like a day or two ago. Um, so I just gave him a large helping of water. And the only good thing about Crowley is that he can survive like a week without water, without me watering him. And I'm really damn grateful that he is still doing okay and like his leaves started to open up a little bit more. Um, actually, let me grab it. This is my baby boy Crowley. Uh, I think he grew, his leaf turned a little yellow recently. Yes, he has googly eyes. And uh, he looks a little dehydrated. Like, I really need to repot him because his roots are being exposed to air. And I'm a bit worried about that, but I haven't actually had the time to go repot him. So, uh, please hold me accountable because I don't want this little bugger to die. Merlin, on the other hand, has been thriving. He came back from the dead. His new little leaf. This guy's doing quite well. Um, no signs of fungus on this guy. Uh, he looks a little sticky some days because I put a little neem oil on him to make sure he doesn't die again. But uh, this guy is doing a lot better and uh, I have a lot of hope that he will keep growing. But 
in in view of trying to nurse him back to health, I may have neglected Crowley, and I feel a bit guilty about that. I, those were just some of the things that I think I forgot existed in my life for the past 1.5 months because I've just been so mentally not present in my life, and、uh, I've been trying to get a grip, <laughs> for lack of better words, and、uh, it's not been working. And I can't say that it will definitely work from here on out. But I recently had a bit of a reset. I'm quite open about the fact that I get help from my mental health, and、uh, I can't say that the methods I've been using aren't effective. They definitely are. I have been definitely a lot more stable, but I think、uh, it could definitely be better because I think something about mental health that I had to learn the hard way growing up was that there's no. One cure. You're not gonna get cured of like your anxiety or depression or anything like that. So you need to learn to cope with it. And、uh, my coping mechanisms and coping methods have definitely improved, but it, it took a really brutal hit in like the 1.5 months. And like I think recently I've just gotten a slightly more、uh, strong grip on my life. In that. I tried to sit down and take stock of how I was feeling and write a little more. I actually forgot the journal for two weeks straight, and I felt really guilty about that because that was one of the things that I know is a marker of whether or not my life is going to shit. Because if I don't journal, it means that I'm writing in hindsight, and when I write in hindsight, my writing is very different. So I think the burnout shows itself in very different ways for very different people, and for me, that is how I keep track of it.、Um, I won't lie. I've cried a lot <laughs> through the last 1.5 months, and I think that's quite normal. Crying is very healthy. It helps you to get the emotions out. It helps you to get some relief in your system. And、uh, I've also just learned to try and surround myself with people who make me want to not cry, <laughs> and、uh, who actively try to、uh, imbue me with some level of hope. I attended this exhibition that some of my friends had、uh, yesterday, actually,、uh, for their module about time and life, and it was very eye-opening. And、uh, it made me really sit down and reflect a little bit on my life and how I had been pacing it very, very badly、uh, since like week five. It's week twelve now. It's been seven weeks of just terrible pacing to my life. In that, I had been, I think, in part trying to rush it. So that I would get through all the bad parts as soon as possible because they were just terrible, and I wasn't being able to snap out of my moods or、um, I wouldn't say recover, but I wasn't able to like get myself back from all these dark spots very very easily. So、um, I think I was very grateful for the fact that、uh, my friends, or at least the people I have surrounded myself with, are very introspective or very much thinkers, so that. They they did the thinking for me essentially when I went down for the exhibition. Even though it was just for a module, it was very eye opening, and I think I think that's what I like about my college because a lot of the mods here are very much thinking modules that make you question、uh, your gauge or understanding of life. So for me, when it came to looking at the exhibitions and looking at my burnout and my life, I realized that I had been trying to cope with just impulsive decisions. I、uh, I'm gonna censor this out. I went and got another with a friend of mine. I th- I do not regret this decision at all. It is probably the best decision I've made this semester, and I am very grateful to my dear friend Jovi for being with me through that whole period.、Um, other things I did were probably along the lines of just impulsively going cafe hopping any moment I could get. And I I mean I bring work out with me when I do go cafe hopping, but I think. It also meant that I was a little happier, and I was taking my breaks away from the college when I needed to, because academic stress was really, really getting to me. And I think, in general, just anxiety and worrying as a whole, I could have dealt with it a lot better. But I guess in the last one point five months, I was just using、uh, outlets like space as well as personal time very differently. So、um, people always say try to like give yourself some space and. Uh, give yourself some time, but I can't exactly do that in my own room. I'm not very great on my own, so I tend to either force myself into social situations that either、uh, make me anxious, 
because it can go either way or they help me reset for the day or I just get out of the college and just make an impromptu decision that I'm gonna go to a cafe I'm gonna go meet a friend I'm gonna just money is spendable I do not have a lot of money I am a broke college student but occasionally my brain needs to reset and you need to just take care of yourself and if that means a cup of coffee with a good friend to talk to then that's how you need to cope I guess um, would not recommend it it does damages to your wallet but uh small things like going to cafes just spending hours on end with people being in their presence really helps a lot and uh, I think I've also become a little bit more honest with myself and my emotions in the time because okay full disclosure I'm terrible at compartmentalizing I know people who are great at it I'm terrible at it but I think in this time it also made me realize that yes I'm terrible at it but I'm also okay with that because it put me in touch with my emotions quite a bit during this burnout period and I sort of confronted a lot of my own internal um, struggles and like my own personal demons because I was struggling to feel loved and I was struggling to love myself and I was also really having a very hard time accepting that I was struggling because I don't like the idea of struggling. I am a strong, capable, human blob. Girl boss gatekeep, whatever. Um, I don't like the idea of being weak. And I think um, in hindsight, looking at myself going through the burnout, it's not me being weak. It is just me <laughs> hitting a low point and needing to pick myself up off the ground. So I think dealing with burnout is going to be different from everybody else. Uh, so I'm just gonna This is not a advice video. It's more of a short ramble about my life in the 1.5 months that I've been MIA But I think something that I would want to offer to anybody who is watching this is to take a step back and maybe like reflect on your life Something that I always revert to when things get very anxiety inducing is actually to do the what you can't control and what you can control list. Like those help me to like put things into perspective and help me just sit down and visualize the fact that okay, there are some things that are just out of your damn control and you need to internalize that so that you can get on with your day before you just end up in a endless spiral in your head. And there's also like a lot of things about overthinking that I had to sort out for myself as well as like stop attempting to like predict the future or mind read because overthinking is unfortunately a part of my life and it's not a part of my life that I particularly like but I have to deal with it so we all cope and we all learn. I think something that I tried to do during this period was to actively tap upon friends because I think something for me growing up and something that I struggled with a lot growing up was actually sharing my problems actively with people because I hated I hated burdening people or like especially like if people ask you are you okay it's very obvious the obvious answer is I'm fine I'm doing just fine I don't need any help I don't want to burden anybody I don't want anyone else to shelter or sh shelter Porter Robinson shelter stream that song um I don't want anyone to shoulder my problems and I would very much hate if I was a burden to somebody else so I just sort of I went through things on my own quite a bit so learning to tap on my friends and rely on my friends has been a process and uh, I think the last 1.5 months I've done that quite a bit and I'm really freaking grateful to all my friends who have like listened to me ramble listened to me cry and uh, talk me through my breakdowns as well as just even just sit with me through my anxiety um, because it has helped a lot but at the same time I also learned that you need to sort shit out on your own <laughs> you can't rely on people all the time it's very weird coming like it's almost like coming full circle Ooh, sorry it's like coming full circle and uh, I realized that I have a slightly healthier balance of uh, choosing when to reach out to people and choosing when to just sit with myself. Through burnout, I learned quite a bit about myself in terms of how I choose to cope. Alcohol. I'm kidding. Please do not. That is not a recommended coping mechanism. I really would not recommend. I think another way I used to cope was just uh, music a lot. As per usual, music is one of my very much appreciated coping mechanisms. 
uh, Keshi released his album Gabriel and like that has been that will probably be the album of 2022 for me it's like March um, until like maybe my friend uh, from Count Vernon decides to drop his album but uh, for now Gabriel is my album of 2022 because that has helped me to just feel my feelings and uh, sort of just understand how I'm doing in retrospect. Well, guess we're moving on to the advice section of uh, this video, which is to... Uh, I will list the following on the screen. What to do when you're dealing with burnout. 1. Take a damn step back and evaluate your situation because you need to identify why you're feeling burnt out, what is causing it, and how you can reorganize things so that you are straining yourself less. I have a daily planner on my iPad and I write down everything in it uh, that I have to do for the week ahead. But it's also nice to just sort of keep like a little notepad on my desk. Okay, as per usual, um, can't really see it very clearly. But I write down my long-term goals on this so that I know, uh, I guess, like what is coming uh, ahead of time so that I can just stick it in one corner and I just sort of keep myself in track of like, okay, this deadline is done, one thing is out of the way. I'm actually done with one module right now, which is like fantastic. So it helped me put things into perspective and it helped me to rationalize the burnout a little better. The second thing I would recommend is taking breaks. <laughs> Funnily enough, because usually when you're feeling burnt out is because you're feeling very overwhelmed with work and you're just being bombarded with work. But I think it's very, very important to take even the smallest of breaks, even if it's just to exercise or to just eat with friends. For the love of God, please do not skip meals. That is the worst thing you can do to your system. I realized <laughs> that was not helping me. And uh, I think I also learned that I function better after having taken like at least a small nap or a small reset or a small like taking a small walk down the NTUC helps. So like, I think that's very important. Take your breaks. And I think the third and final thing I would recommend is to remind yourself that Everything you can achieve in this burnout period is a win. Uh, something that me and my friends have experienced a lot is a lack of motivation when it comes to burnout periods because we just, we can't. We just absolutely cannot. So something I realized that we need to do is positive reinforcement. So small things at a time. Like even if it's just getting out of bed at a certain time, brushing your teeth, going down to get yourself damn breakfast so you don't skip a meal. Small things like that are very important and we need to count them as wins and like at least take note of the fact that you're not just lying in bed staring at the ceiling feeling sad and feeling guilty about not getting things done. You're getting things done and you're feeling more productive for doing it. So I think that is my last thing that I'll leave you guys with in this video and uh, yeah, I will see when I upload again because I actually did film a video on like skincare if I'm not wrong. It's just floating somewhere in the abyss on my photo album whatever you want to call it. I haven't had the time to edit it. I don't really think it's my best work, so I don't really want to put it on the internet. I may dump it into my uh, compilation vlog, if you will. But uh, I hope you guys are doing okay at this time of the semester. I hope you guys are coping. And I hope you guys are feeling less shitty about life, knowing that, I mean, we're all struggling, but I hope that this video makes you feel less alone. And I hope that maybe my own insights about my own coping mechanisms and my own life help you to reflect on your own life and uh i think something that i dug up recently because i was asked to i was supposed to dig up some old poetry and i found this like piece of writing from i think the end of last year that i just scribbled out i'm gonna print it and actually put it on my wall because i think it's a nice reminder to myself but i will put it on the screen and you guys can pause and take a read and it helped me to put my life into perspective a little bit when I found it again and read it. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please, please, please take care of yourself. As my good friend Casper would say, drink more water. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Take care. I love you. And ciao.